good morning children welcome to e learning session in today's session we are going to start a new topic that is animal fiber in sixth class we have learned about types of fibers that is natural fibers and artificial fibers in natural fibers are again divided into that is fibers of plants and fibers of animals what are the examples for fibers of plants that is cotton and jute fibers of animals examples wool and silk coming to natural fibers uh, sorry artificial fibers artificial fibers are prepared from uh, artificially that is example nylon and polyester now coming to animal fiber animal fibers are natural fibers Silk and wool are the natural fibers obtained from animals like silkworms and sheep. In the picture, you might have seen that your mom wears beautiful, soft, and shiny sarees on special occasion. Texture, beauty, luster of fabric of this fabric grabs a lot of attention. but what is this fabric yes it is silk so today we are going to learn one of the natural fiber that is silk how silk is produced so production of silk there are various steps involved in silk production rearing of silk worms and obtaining silk is known as sericulture so in the picture you can see silk worm silk worm gives silk there are different stages in the silk production that is first stage that is moth to egg then egg to cocoon cocoon to fiber that is reeling and finally reeling to weaving these are the four steps we'll study each step in detail now coming to first step that is moth to egg in the production of silk moths are collected and kept in grill mesh boxes in separate room so in the picture you can see grish uh, grill mesh boxes These silk moths are called Bombyx mori or chilkalu. So here in the picture you can see uh, uh, moths and grill grill mesh boxes. Now the moths lay hundreds of eggs which are very small in size. See in the picture you can see the moth lays hundreds of eggs which are very small in size. a female moth lays around 500 eggs in one go and dies the eggs of silk worms are called seeds people allow these eggs or seeds to hatch in special chambers like over mats on the beds of mul- chopped mulberry leaves to get small worms so these eggs are transported into small worms sometimes people buy these silk moths directly to produce eggs these are called greenages so the biggest growing uh, greenages growing center is located at horsley hills in chittur district now coming to second step that is egg to cocoon here large trays with mulberry leaves and larva feeding on them is seen so here in the t- large trays with mulberry leaves these are the mulberry leaves with larva feeding on them is seen these worms eat leaves day and night they grow in size and they are transported into big sized cane frames called chandrikalu now chilkalu are transported into chandrikalu 
so after 30 to 35 days the caterpillar stops eating and settles at a particular place so these at this stage the uh, worm it goes on feeding on the mulberry leaves and after 30 to 35 days the caterpillar stops eating and settles at a particular place it weaves a net to hold itself so it starts weaving a net to hold itself caterpillar moves its mouth from side to side and secrete fiber like substance so in the picture you can see so caterpillar moves its mouth side by side and uh, to secrete a fiber like substance the net is woven completely to cover the body of caterpillar finally what happens the net is woven completely around its uh, body okay so it almost covers the body of caterpillar This net seems to be a closed sack. This is called as patukailu or cocoon. So uh, see in the picture that is this net seems to be uh, a closed sack like structure. And this is called as patukailu or cocoon. If the cocoon are left to themselves, the cocoon develop into moths and fly away. Okay, so we have to be very careful at this stage. Because if the cocoon develops into moth, then it will fly away. So farmers, they kill the larva inside the cocoon. So at this stage, the farmers, they kill the larva inside the cocoon by a process called stifling. By putting a lot of cocoon in a steam oven for 10 to 15 minutes in order to uh, avoid uh, the uh, changing into moth and flying away the farmers they kill the larva inside the cocoon by a process called stifling in this process what is done that is the cocoon is uh, kept in a steam oven for 10 to 15 minutes stifling process helps to store the cocoon for a long time this process is usually done in a reeling center so these cocoons are kept in sealed bags and stored at a cocoon market. So majorly cocoon markets are located at Hindupur, Madanapalli, Dharmavaram and Hyderabad. So these cocoons will give now silk fiber. Now cocoon to fiber. Third step is cocoon to fiber. Now the silk fiber is obtained from cocoon by a process called reeling the silk. So from the cocoon we have to obtain a silk fiber. It is obtained by a process called uh, reeling the silk. Reeling is done with special machines called reelers and twisters. The silk fiber is carefully collected from the cocoon and nearly 3 to 18 of such threads are wound together to make a yarn. So the silk fiber is collected from the cocoon and uh, nearly 3 to 18 of such threads they are wound together to make a yarn. See in the picture the uh, people are making a yarn. This yarn is cleaned, bleached and colored. You can see in the picture different colors of yarn. Next, the fourth step involves reeling to weaving. The processing of silk is the twisting of one or more threads of raw silk into a strand sufficiently strong for weaving or knitting. This procedure is called throwing. So the procedure of silk is the twisting of one or more threads of the raw silk into a strand. Okay, so which makes them strong for weaving or knitting. This process is called throwing. These people get the silk yarn from reeling center to weave a variety of saris. Now silk yarn, then finally it is used to weave a variety of saris. So Pochampali Patu and Dharmavaram are the famous types 
produced by our states so these two are the pictures this is the pochampalli saree and this is a darbavaram saree which are the famous types of produced by our state all the four stages can be summarized in a form of a cycle so here it is the life cycle of silkworm so first egg egg changes into larva then larva changes into cocoon finally the cocoon changes into adult moth see in the picture that is silk moth laying eggs this egg changes into larva then larva changes into cocoon cocoon again finally changes into silk moth so children diagram that is life cycle of the silk moth is very important so diagram part is also very very important so practice the diagram today we'll come to the end of this session in the next session we'll be dealing with the second natural fiber that is wool i'll be posting the homework in whatsapp till then stay safe stay home